For the evening. I'm Carol Smirkwood and I'll introduce you to my remote co-host. It's Kelly Willy Booby. Kelly, you there? Good evening, Carol. Of course I'm here. I'm always here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I bet you wish you could control me with a remote Carol. Do I? <laughs> I do indeed, Kelly. I do indeed. But what I'm more excited about is our first guest. I'm so excited about all our guests, of course, but our first guest is very good with the crack, I hear. Oh yes, Carol. Well, before we welcome her onto the show, let me tell you about my crack. Now, before this lockdown started, Carol, frankly, I was getting laser treatment for hair removal on the crack region. And I have to say it was working very well. I'd had about eight sessions, Carol, and Really, that smooth as a baby's bum doesn't come from nowhere, because frankly, that's exactly what it was, Carol. But now, Carol, after these three months, I am right back to square one. What a waste of money that laser hair removal was. So frankly, hairy arses all round, I say. Let's embrace them, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> How very hair suit of you to point out that. Hair suit. Hair suit. Oh, Carol, you're a card. You really are a card. <laughs> A card and a crack, that's what you are. Now let's move on to welcoming our first guest. It's our very own relationship counsellor, Carmel McCrackerty. Are you there, Carmel? Good I day. am. Hello, girls. And uh, Kelly, how's your little flatulence problem? Oh, Carmel, so lovely of you to ask. It's actually a little bit of a flatulent couch. Listen to this, Carmel. Oh, it's not doing it, obviously. It do it. I promise it's not me, Carmel. <laughs> Well, whatever you say, but we don't believe you. Well, this week I had an email from Patrick saying, why, oh why, does my wife say so many stupid things? And Jesus, Barry and Joseph, did he not attach a document outlining in detail the last 200 stupid things she'd said this week? Girls, this is a man with time on his hands. Now, I have to agree with you, Patrick, that your wife saying Rangers should have been declared winners this season because it really wasn't fair Celtic had won it nine times in a row is beyond crazy and probably quite dangerous to the wrong set of ears. But my question is, in the name of the wee man, if she was so annoying, why did you marry her in the first place? And I'll tell you, along with the aid of fellow German expert Edgar Tolley. Now, I know it's my advice you want as I'm very famous for nailing it, but just to put your mind at rest, Edgar is in the Premier Division of Spiritual Leaders, along with the likes of the Pope and the Dalai Lama, so he is no slacker. So this insight will be very new to you, Patrick, and I can tell from your email you don't really like listening to anyone apart from yourself, so pay attention. What Edgar had explained is that we all have a pain body inside our actual body, but it's something you can't see because it's only going on in your mind. And a bit like an alcoholic needing more and more drink, your pain body needs loads of annoying things to keep it happy. And some people have a little pain body and some people have a medium-sized pain body, but you, Patrick, I can guarantee, have a ginormous one. And back in the day, you were nice to your wife because you were distracted by her bouncy bosom and shapely behind. So you didn't notice that your main attraction was because she had a personality that was seriously going to do your head in. And if we weren't in this COVID joke, you could do what you usually do and go to the game on a Saturday and scream your head off at all the ages playing for the other team, not to mention the linesman and the ref. And then you could have a good old swear at the annoying drivers on the road home. And wouldn't your pain body be delighted to have all its usual stuff to be moaning about? But at the moment, when it's just you and your wife, and she says something simple like, I can't find the big frying pan, 
your pain body, desperate for a fight, goes into an enormous rant that if she just put the big frying pan next to the little one, this crazy shit that she's expecting you to know just wouldn't happen. So my advice to you, Patrick, is to get yourself Edgar's book. It's called The Power of Now. And after you've read it, explain to your wife you've discovered that you have a big pain body going on in your mind. So the next time you're screaming at her for doing something stupid, tell her to say, is that your pain body talking, Patrick? And you can say, why, yes, it is. And stop insulting her and look for the bloody frying pan yourself. And before you know it, you might develop a more sensitive way of dealing with people and your cynicism could give way to an emerging joy and you could draw strength from the contribution you make to your marriage and we would love you for the effort. Because at the moment, Patrick, and I'm only saying this because I'm getting paid and I've got a big screen in front of me, you are a giant pain in the ass and everyone knows it especially your wife. Okay, well, that's all for this week. I'll see you soon, girls. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Bye, Carmel. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well. Wow, we Carol. I mean, she has got quite a big pain body, hasn't she? Yes, I wasn't sure if she was saying pin or pain, but uh, I guess pain, 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 pain. Whatever it is, it's big, isn't it, Carol? Well, you should know it'd be like a pain in the old uh, burger, just like you. Aww. <laughs> Aww. I love you. Anyway, Carol. <laughs> I'm so excited about our next guest. She's very good at hings, isn't she? Oh, so I've heard. She's very good at hings. Yes. I wonder what hings she'll be doing for us tonight, Carol. It's her very own Vicky Dobbs does hings. Hello, Vicky. Are you there? Hello, my chickadees. Vicky Dobbs here doing an item on whiskey tasting. Oh, what a great way to de-stress yourself, but also a great way to kill the virus. There'll be no need for a mask when you're drinking from the cask. So, I've got my three bottles here, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm basically going to just taste them. Three whiskey bottles waiting to be drunk. Three whiskey bottles waiting to be drunk. So, I'm going to start off with bottle number one. Oh, it's a bit peter. Or is it feta? You know, like them vinegators. Seems like I get when I'm doing my Joe Wicks PE. Mm. I'm getting bin juice with an int of tin mackerel that's been stuck at the back of the fridge for three weeks. Lovely bubbly. On to bottle number two. Swirl it around a bit like you've got your towels on 60. Do a little dance. Make a little love. Oh, that feels good. I'm just going to leave that one there. On to bottle number three. Did you know that whiskey is made from water, yeast and barley? A bit like bean barley. I love beans, me. My favourite said mammy. Any road, there you have it. Drink your worries away. Or oh, uh, you could just look after yourself and have a nice brew instead. Just make sure it's Yorkshire. Lovely bubbly. Cheers. 
Cheers, Vicky. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We can't wait to see you again next week. <laughs> oh, thanks, me chickadees. Cheerio now. Cheerio now. Oh, dearie me, that was rather marvellous. <laughs> It was marvellous, wasn't it, Carol? Frankly, just watching the lovely Vicky Dobbs getting pished, I quite enjoyed it. Oh, it's very sweet. I can highly recommend tasting whiskey all night. Oh, yes. Do a little dance. Make a little love. Get pished tonight. <laughs> oh, I could just trip the light fantastic, couldn't you, Kelly? Trip, trip. <laughs> I wish you would trip smash your face in. Anyway, let's move on to our next guest, shall we? It's the lovely, Ve oh there she is. Look, it's Auntie G. Hello, Auntie G. Well, Hello. Hello, my kitty cats, my penguin biscuits, my <laughs> Sonic animal wafers, oh, and my snowballs. Oh. <laughs> How so are you? That all we had very well, thank you. It's so lovely to see you. But I just wondered, could you tell us a bit about yourself, Auntie G? Of course, my darlings. Well, my name is Auntie G. I'm the world's newest trash show host and confidant. Uh, people say I'm like an agony aunt, but you know, that's so yesterday. I'm like a I'm like an Asian Mrs. Merton, or a Latino Ellen DeGeneres, or a Pakistani Stella Black, because I love to laugh. Do you want to know where I'm from? Oh, yes, yeah, please. So I come from a place far, far away where the roads are covered in tracks and the wise men, the wise men, they sit in a house made of bamboo sticks where the sun always shines. Only. I'm from Edinburgh, girl. <laughs> ah, you bunch of Ouija's. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a bit about myself. I've been here for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On a student visa. <laughs> I've done so many degrees. I've got a PhD in PhDs. I'm Pretty Patel's worst nightmare. Do you know who she is? She's on the cabinet. She's an Asian. Um, but um, unlike me, I've got a brain <laughs> and an accent and an extended family. I mean, I don't drive a taxi or have a corner shop. No, 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 no. I sold the multi Tesco's. <laughs> but I am Boris Johnson's worst nightmare. My DNA profile done, ladies. Have you had your DNA profile done? Mm -hmm. Oh, very simple. Ah, that's what you do. Yes. And I had my DNA profile done, and it turns out, ladies, it turns out I'm not related to a letterbox or a postbox. Yes. So Boris Johnson can just take a run and jump. So have you ladies been good in the pandemic? Have you been washing your hands five times a day? Yes, five times a day. Have you been socially distancing except with your family members? Yes. Have you been giving to charity? Have you been wearing a face mask? So do you know you are following Sharia law? Yes, Sharia law to the back door. <coughs> and people say, people say that Boris Johnson is an Islamophobe, but he's not. No, he's a follower of Sharia law. Do you know why ladies? Do you know why? It's because he's married to one woman and engaged to another. Oh. Now, do you ever wonder, ladies, why does the queen have so many birthdays? You know, it was her birthday the other day. Do you ever wonder that, no? Well, the reason is, it's to give the Duke of Edinburgh lots of chances to remember her birthday. <laughs> soon, soon we're going to have 365 days of the year. We'll celebrate the queen's birthday. <laughs> Oh, Auntie, so G, Auntie G, I heard that um, you're very famous online and I know that you're simply inundated with people asking your advice about things and you've also had some very famous people asking for your advice, am I right? Oh, very, very famous, very famous, yes, very famous people. Let me tell you about one of them. One of them was, you know, um, the, our first minister, what's her name? Uh, 
कि नो नो दैट समबडी एल्स निकोलस टार्जन निकोलस टार्जन यस यू नो हर यस We are very big fan of Nicola Sturgeon and TG. She actually was a guest on our show. We salute Nicola. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> no. <laughs> so she wrote to me. She said, "Auntie G, Auntie G, I have a problem." She said, "I want to ask the Scottish people to exercise twice a day. Do you think I'm doing the right thing?" I said to Nicola, "Are you off your bloody head? Scottish people like Pakistani people and Pakistani." we don't like to exercise once a month you're going to give them a heart attack i said the best exercise for scottish people and pakistani people is for them to find out where their fruit and veg is kept you know we people we don't want to be wafer thin we just want to eat tanax caramel wafers mm. that was my advice to her and she took it very well i actually really do like a tanax Caramel wafer, and I do like some snowballs as well. What about you, Carol? I'm fond of a log. She's fond of a log, Auntie G. <laughs> what sort of log she likes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Quite <laughs> right, Auntie G. <laughs> Anyone else famous who's been in touch with you, Auntie G? Well, you know Matt Hancock. You know Matt Hancock? Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's an idiot. He wrote to me. He said, "Dear Auntie G, dear Auntie G." I want your advice. He said, "I want to be as popular as Boris is with the women. Should I go blonde?" He said. "Should I go blonde?" I said, "Matt, not Nick Hancock. He's the good-looking actor." I said, "Matt, you know they it is true what they say. It is true what they say. Blondes do have more fun, yes. But the other thing they say is that blondes are dumb, yeah." So, so I said to him, he was already half there. <laughs> so blonde. <laughs> I think you're so right, Auntie G. You're so right. If you could give one piece of advice to our viewers watching at home, what would that be? I would say, why don't you watch Auntie G's YouTube channel? Because she's always full of lots of good advice, and anything you want to know about love, marriage, divorce, death. Um, Will is inheritance. Then ask me, and I'll give you all the wrong answers. I mean, the right answers. <laughs> That's wonderful, Auntie G. You really have been a spectacular guest on Witzer Face Zoom TV. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, my kitty cat, my penguin biscuits, my tennis carnival wafers. See you all very soon. Bye bye now. <laughs> oh, Carol, have you ever been likened to a log before? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> that was a first. Anyway, Carol, what a show that has been tonight. Such variety, if you will. We've talked about cracks. We've talked about logs. We've talked about whiskey. It has been a Scottish night through and through. We just have to thank a very special guest, Carmel McCrackerty, Vicky Dobbs, and of course, a very special guest, Auntie G. Thank you for joining me. I'm Kelly Willy Booby and my co-host Carol Smirk with the log. We hope to see you again on Witzer Face Zoom TV. Bye bye. Witzer Face.